Thank you and welcome to the April 25th metrics model meeting today. Uh, so we were at OSSNA last week. And so both of these items come from OSS uh, North America in Seattle. Uh, the first one is I just wanted to let people know that I did go to just kind of a social event for um, the Joint Development Foundation. So that's the foundation that <laughs> kind of, <coughs> excuse me, leads the standard stuff. And I did have a chance to connect with Jory there. Mm -hmm. So Jory had put together this, this social event. Um, and just, it was great to meet Jory. I'd never met Jory in person. And we just kind of talked about continuing this, um, this work. I know that she's just, she was just really busy. And I think just got a lot on her plate and just couldn't maybe have, you know, effectively tend to things that we were asking, maybe because we're, we're very early in this process. So the point being is that this conversation is back, back on. So conversation had conversation. Path. Had, it was a good conversation. So, and like I said, it was really nice to meet George, a very pleasant person. So, okay. Is there like a step we're targeting there, Matt? Well, I guess like, well, I think the, the next, next thing, like a next actable, actionable thing to do, I suppose would be the question. It's really me meeting with Jory to figure out what that sequence of actions is. So she understands what we want to do is basically take the metrics models and consider them as standards. Yeah. So there's, then there's a process that we have to go through and I need that articulated to me and how the JDF can help in that process. I see. Foundation. So I just need to connect with Jory to start syncing those things up. So the first conversation was, <clears throat> is this a thing? Meaning, can we turn metrics models into ISO standards? And that took maybe you know, 30 minutes or an hour to have that conversation as she had to understand what the metrics models were, you know, what we were doing as a community. You know what I mean? Like I just had to explain the whole yeah. like, context of you know, sure what was going on and then we left that meeting with the intention of kind of following up on what the next steps are uh -huh. that was where i kind of had lost some conversation and so that's what i'm looking to pick up again is what these next steps can be all right that sounds good yeah, yeah so i think we're gonna like a you know we i do think we're gonna have to hire or consider somebody as a technical writer for the standards so I think there's a very particular format that the standard needs to be in, at least from my conversations with Jory. So yeah. um, anyway. Okay. So I don't really have much information other than it's back on track. Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, any other any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, when we were at ChaosCon, we what we did at ChaosCon is we had a breakout session and it was really <laughs> excuse me the metric models and so these were the slides that we had used and what we did was we just asked people to self-organize around different areas of interest so fatigue sustaining contributors and so on and so forth and you can see that Georg ran one, Bernard ran one, I did, Elizabeth and Dawn ran these different breakout sessions. So what we did was we actually spent maybe 20 or 30 minutes having the people in the circle um, just work on the document that you see, I have the tabs open on the top around what they think about community fatigue or what they think about you know internal project influence. After about 20, 20 or 25 minutes, we asked the group to just communicate amongst themselves and kind of talk through what they had added. Very similar to what we do in a lot of these meetings uh, and then report back to the overall group, the larger group of about 50 people. Um, I'd say that it was a really successful process. We had a lot of really good conversations. Um, I know that sometimes the conversations kind of took a turn you know, or they would kind of, you know, but that's kind of normal because there's people involved. Um, but what, I, what I'd like to do today is just kind of take a look at what was developed and you can click on any of those links as well. Uh, and then we should probably talk about, you know, what would be the, the next one or two or three that we would like to kind of focus on that we feel has the most, um, that's most pressing or the one that we have the most interest on as a group, but there's just some really nice starts from, from everybody. So um, 
Sean? Or uh, I, mean, I thought it. I thought it worked. I thought it worked pretty well. It was. Um, it was nice to see that like the groups were sort of evenly split. Like there wasn't one group that was massive and one group didn't have any, um, which was nice. I have to admit though, I am a little bit disappointed that we tried to push people to this meeting and we don't have a single new person. Oh yeah. That's... Which makes me a little sad. It is a little sad because I think they added themselves as like a number of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and the as contributors, so we could um, maybe to that end. I don't know. I think Elizabeth was going to do like a follow up email. Yeah, Sean. Uh, so, so I was going to say that that I think the follow up email, and I also I don't really judge anybody not coming to a meeting the week after the conference because I myself struggle to get to these meetings the week after a conference because of all the stuff that stacks up. Yeah, to me, that's fair. I'm not. I'm not judging. I'm just a little. I, I didn't. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to apply my judgment. <laughs> you were judging people. There's some kind of meta judgment I did not intend. Sorry. Oh, it's just sad. Just a little sad. Disappointed. Yeah. Well, I think point well taken. We can certainly um, talk to Elizabeth when she sends out that follow up email to just as part of it, just encourage people to attend the meetings. And honestly, this would be the one that we were trying to steer people towards. Just based on the project or based on chaos con um, okay so you know what i thought maybe we could do is you all have access to these through the slide deck here i can drop them into the minutes as well um, but if you could log in what i'd like you to do is is maybe just take a, a quick look and just read the first page of the why it matters for each of them And then we could maybe come back after like five or 10 minutes and just kind of see where people, you know, what, what's on your mind and just kind of what you're thinking and, and go forward from there. Does that work for people? So five or 10 minutes to, to read each of them and the why it matters shouldn't take very long. And if you have comments on any of them, like just add them to the docs. How's it going Armstrong? All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and like five or 10 minutes, just give these a read. And Armstrong, just so you know, you can, if you want to see each of these, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just copy and paste all of the links into the minutes. That'll be easier. So, okay. Thank you. Yep.
I have two more to take a look at, so I'm almost done. All right, how are people doing? Can get through it. Yeah, I'm um, good. Okay. Yeah, I'm good enough. I can read the last one later. <clears throat> okay. Um, what, did you have any thoughts? Like your initial reactions to the five of these? I think we could probably spend a meeting on each of them, like part of a meeting on each of them finishing yeah. Or assign it to each other asynchronously. Yep. And I also think most of these didn't these come from ones that were already in progress. So we also have they have to also be merged with the other work. Some of the existing, yeah, because even some of the, like the um, like preliminary text just to get people in the right frame of mind was from an existing document. Mm -hmm. and, uh other thoughts i had a few questions yeah i know some of these are going to take a fair bit of fair bit of work it's interesting like the uh the community fatigue one um all of the stuff is in the why it matters like i, I think that they didn't get to they didn't get to the user stories or the metrics mm -hmm. so that one's i think going to require a fair bit of additional additional work and then okay. the one that i the one that my team worked on the uh internal project influence um <laughs> it was like uh, i don't know well over a dozen proposed metrics for the metrics model I so that, that one needs a bit of uh quite a bit of paring down i think yep i saw that they were they're great they're interesting yeah that was the most well formatted one too for what it's worth done <laughs> um okay. I, had a good team. I, I had gary on my team okay. <laughs> Keep that organized thank you gary yeah. <laughs> um i guess you know another maybe question is after being at open source summit north america or daniel i know that you were just like in in southeast asia i think um yep. you know were there are, do any of these kind of speak to issues that are top of mind for people? I mean, the security one seems to be very front and center for a lot of people at the moment. I think contributor sustainability as well is another one that's a hot topic right now. Okay. Yeah, basically, the, I mean, the five topics here are all relevant and people are talking about them, specifically in Fosasia. Um, yeah, they were, they were perhaps, uh, my feeling because I didn't go to, to all of the, you know, talks or so, but yeah, perhaps, um, 
it was a mix between technical side of discussions about how to do certain things because a big chunk of the attendees were uh, students so that was working in this way this time specifically in Vietnam um, and the other was perhaps about a um, sustainability um, and community discussions okay so uh, for instance security um, for sure there were talks on this but my feeling is that perhaps it was not the, the big one or the biggest one but that's this, this, this part of the discussion. Okay. What if you see in the security one too, it leaned towards S bombs. Mm -hmm. which I I know that they can contain security related information, mm -hmm. but I think it was also just the pressure we talked about, and was it just yesterday, um, with the U.S. federal government in the data science working group, with the pressure from the U.S. federal government mm -hmm. asking their vendors to write S bombs. So I'm not sure if the spawns are quite the same as security to me, but nonetheless, I, I, I get it. They contain some of that information. Um, okay. Um, yeah, Matt, talking about the security, I don't know if uh, you are talking about from the community perspective, how the community is reasoning along vulnerabilities, risk, those things that are more on the software side and around yeah. the software side. So yeah, it, it, it ended yeah, up that is the focus then I think we should do some sort of classification from the community to see make metrics that could easily flag when uh, some vulnerabilities are highly alert because security in its uh, purest form is a very wide topic sure it right. comes from different face sight so if we can focus how people write code where do the provenance of code some people copy code from their system overflow they have one unit test to test some loopholes. They inject it in their project. How do we control for that? Those kind of things are measures which we could control. Yep. So to lower level of granularity, we can fine tune our, our measures to make sure we don't just uh, go too broad, broad, broad and loss. We can narrow them down. Yep. Um, to that point, um, Armstrong. So I felt like I ran this group so I felt like a lot of the conversations <clears throat> were about vulnerabilities, like you talk about, like um, publish vulnerabilities on a particular piece of software. But that said, like there were, do you see, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Armstrong? Yes, Matt, I can. Okay. <laughs> so do you see this one that I have highlighted? Yeah. So this was like, uh, the premise was less about vulnerabilities. And the, the logic was that um, if there's a lot of people, well, you can kind of see it. If there's a lot of people involved in the project, uh -huh. that may lower kind of the, um, the target area just because there's many people. Uh -huh. So it's a kind of a more social issue, just about market control of a project. Yeah. I think it's even in line with the bazaar of Cathedral. Many eyes. Uh, yeah. yeah. So and it's more of a, yeah. So, I mean, we could, at least on the security components, mm -hmm. just kind of focus on the technical security, at least for the time being. Yeah. Just so, to your point, so we're not all over the place. Like, here are all the 100,000 things you could look at from a security perspective. Mm -hmm. um, even, do you see this one? Yeah. Again, not a published vulnerability issue, more of a process, uh -huh. community process related issue. So is your is your suggestion to kind of start breaking these apart? Yeah, we. I mean, like, for <clears> example, <throat> you talk about the metrics, like number of reviews per commit or pull request, which is very good. Then we could go further to say some communities enforces plus two for core contributors, people who know about the code base better. Then people who are still novice, they give them the power of plus one, which they could look around just to make sure some little catch are not sneaking in the code. They could say, okay, look yeah. at me, plus one. But those core, now we could say how many core reviewers have looked into the commit before it was matched. Yeah. Because if we have 20 reviewers and all of them are plus one, it's there is still high risk. 
we need at least two core reviewers to look into that review before it is merged. Yep. So numbers alone at that point without the context of that number might be a threat to the security. I like that. Um, what does the OpenSSF scorecard provide? What insight does that provide? For those familiar with the OpenSSF scorecard. It provides a lot. It's um, it's a huge laundry list of of stuff related to security. So it looks for <clears throat> it looks for open vulnerabilities. Um, and so there are like, I don't know, like a dozen or two dozen things that it looks at. It looks at things like, you know, do you um, pin your dependencies? Do you have branch protection? It looks at a huge number of, yeah. of things related to security. So there's it's a, a page. catch all. Yeah, there's an eight and a half page that summarizes the most recent hmm. scan. What is it? So it sounds, it, <clears throat> it, it is a catch all, like some yeah. technical things, some some community. Try, I think it tries to be, and it's cons it's constantly expanding, although at a slower rate now. But the things that get scanned has have changed markedly in the last two years. Like it, they just keep adding to it. It's certainly the most comprehensive thing I've I've seen. Yeah. Okay. There's yes, agreed. There's nothing more comprehensive. So is it in our effort or in our interest to try to develop a model like this? It would also be comprehensive, or would it be more sensible to try to contribute these to OpenSSF? We discovered. I don't think we should reinvent the wheel. I think we could express what's in part of the OpenSSF or in the OpenSSF scorecard today uh, in a metric, but I don't even know that we need to. I mean, I think they have it pretty well covered, honestly. Okay. But. I'm open to what everybody else thinks. We have an open SSF metric. I was just looking. We do. Oh, do we? I was pretty. I was pretty sure we did. Oh. It's the open SSF best practices badge, which is a little yeah. bit different. That's the old CII badge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a little bit it's a little bit different. The core infrastructure initiative is what it's on the scorecard. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm wondering if we... I think don't they use this? Do they use the scorecard as as the uh, one of the inputs into the CII badge or the best practices badge? I don't know because the CII badge predates OpenSSF scorecard. Hmm. I would suspect no, but I haven't looked. Well, but it's moved. It's the badge is moved under OpenSSF. Oh. The last time I checked, it was still the same website with just a different name. So I don't think the scorecard's in there right now. I mean, personally, if if um yeah, it's different. Is it different? It's different. Yeah. So here's here's the criteria for the badge. And then if you look at like uh. I mean, I'm almost wondering at this point, okay, what it, is this the... And then what I just sent you is, if you scroll down, you can see the the 8 knot open SSF, which is an uh, easy way to, to see what's in it. <clears throat> okay. Best practices badge is one of the things in the open SSF scorecard. Uh, it is. Yeah, the CII best practices. Oh, I see it. Gotcha. Right there. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, part of me, just based on this conversation, is I'm wondering if it would, with respect to software security, to not reinvent the wheel, to actually just open an issue in OpenSSF and say, here are the things. We ran a small workshop at ChaosCon. And here are some of the things that we heard in that discussion? I would look in detail at the OpenSSF stuff because I I am going to guess that most of this is included already. Okay. Um, if you start to dig into the details, because there's a lot of, so this is this is a one-liner um, 
for for eight knot, but the details that you get back from the scorecard are are um, quite a bit more. <clears throat> Excuse me, detailed than like there's even more than this. Oh, uh, well, those might be the things I can send you a. Let's see. No, I don't think I have a public one. Um. So maybe just compare. I do feel like over the years, we've kind of stayed away from security on some of our metrics and models, just because OpenSSF open SSF does this. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And that's always, right. Yeah, that's, is that, yeah. And then we just like point to the scorecard we could, or just point to the, to the badge. What most people could also do, and I've seen it in the communities like the ML Commons. Yeah. It's an open source community, but mostly for these uh, high level technologies like generative models and AI things. They will focus more on benchmarking, on testing to talk about quality, which is a healthy way also of uh, addressing uh, some of the technical problems that relates to security and so they put it under the banner of software quality then in different phase side they are now measuring concrete things but benchmarking is something that they really keep constantly one other communities that you also appreciate you see like what people like the cloud providers like amazon and many others they will recommend penetration testing one a year for all the infrastructure, it's very costly to run such tests. Some of the tools that are used to scan vulnerabilities or security problems, those tools also outdate. Some of them also have vulnerability issues. So we also need to test those tools, test our unit testing fact suit and things like that. Sometimes we just take them for the ground fruit that, okay, these are the gospel fruit. We run the test and see what if these tools themselves are attacked? It's a lot of information I know that sometimes, as we say, if we go down to a lower level of granularity and say, okay, this is where we start, and those are the kind of focus we'll be giving them. We acknowledge it's a problem, and then we start somewhere measuring concrete things. This is helpful. Thanks, Armstrong. I think. Do you see what I put? I, I can open an issue in OpenSSF if we're able to, uh, and I'll take a look at what you provided, Don, to make sure we're not saying you should include things that are already well included to do our best. But I'm I'm all for just handing this off to OpenSSF. Okay. But then I can tag you, Armstrong. Okay, no problem. But yeah, if you want to be part of that conversation, would people be okay with that? Yeah. Um, anybody else, Kevin, Daniel? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Don, no, just to like, I, I mean, are you okay with handing kind of this work over to OpenSSF? Yeah. Open I mean, I think it makes sense. Okay. Um, I'm not against including references to it. I just, I feel, I don't want to generate, I don't want to do work that they've already done. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I think it would be yeah. more suitable there. Okay. And by the way, I did not understand what this meant. This is with respect to security. The dependency depth? No, keep reading. You mean the hamster part? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's. Oh, I mean, I guess that's just a silly toy <laughs> exemplar right there. It's all. I was. I didn't even notice it when we were doing the workshop. I only read it today, and I'm like, I have no idea what. 
what that means. But I thought maybe it was something that I just was not up to speed on, but apparently not. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's I think it's just that um, you know you can really, um, yeah you you can write <laughs> stupid a lot of stupid projects yeah. that, that you put out there that are that just do really nothing. I think that's just an example of that. Fair. Okay, great. Um, well, I will take a look at that. Um, I think, so then maybe based on the conversations, that is one thing less for us. Based on the conversations, I think, Dawn, that you had brought up, and I feel like, Daniel, you had kind of brought these up too. Um, thinking about the communities and maybe sustaining contributors is the most sensible one here. The other, I think, is community fatigue is very community oriented. Um, I also, I just, I just ran the open SSF scorecard on Augur just um, with the show details, just to give you a sense for all of the stuff that's in that. Um, okay. Just so you can, if you want to have a look. Cause you may or may not have it installed to, to look at it. It's okay. that's a eight pages of stuff. Of stuff. Yeah. And you can see the summary of each section on the ANOT page for okay. every day as well okay because no one's gonna process that on a dashboard not all this no, I know. <laughs> and you no. almost never run it with with show details unless you're looking for something specific but if you're gonna look at what what all is included in it i think before you file an issue i think maybe spend some time um with understanding like the scope of what the open ssf scorecard is designed to do and how everything has to be automated so that they can run it as a scorecard. Because some of the stuff in that document, I think is just, while we may, might care about it, probably is not within the scope of OpenSSF. Um, well, like this one, like the market control? Mm -hmm. Like I, yeah. I, I would suspect yeah, you can't that. Determine that. There, there's just no way to determine that. There's no way for them to automate it. Okay. But like things I suspect like that all the stuff that can be automated and is within the scope of open SSF is already in the scorecard. If I had that kind of thing, um, like the number of reviewers per PR, maybe it was something that had come up. Yeah, like I guess, I guess my point is I'm, I'm not sure that we should file an issue with open SSF with a bunch of random things that people have kind of asked. Oh, for. I won't do random things. Um, I, I'll try to at least spend some time like holding yeah. these two up to the light. But I'm, if you if you think about so sorry, that's not my point. I, I phrased that very poorly. Um my point is that because it's designed to be a scorecard, mm -hmm. like number of reviews per commit PR, how do you score that across very different types of projects? Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? I think some of this, even though it's um, I think would be difficult for for them to um just just frankly just out of their scope um is everything... i guess if it was me i would say just go use the open ssf scorecard and call it done but if you wanted to file an issue but we can definitely I feel, like, I feel like the scorecard is pretty comprehensive and it has has the core things i don't think we need to ask them to add more things to it, I guess is my point. I wasn't going to add. I was. That's not how I was going to frame the issue. And I don't have to do an issue. Like the less yeah. I have to do, the better. But um, it was going to be more that we ran this workshop. Mm -hmm. And here were a few things that came up. Um, and then <clears throat> somebody from the community could respond to that issue. Not that we recommend you include these in your scorecard. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm happy to do nothing as well. <laughs> that's that's okay with me. If that's all that this meeting comes out of is that I don't have to do anything. <laughs> I'm okay. okay with that. Okay, now, this is helpful. Um, I'll, I still will take a look, just kind of what the scorecard is, is probably useful for me to know anyway. Um, but a point well taken that if it can't be scored as well, then it may not be very useful to them. I just, part of me hates to to do this work and have people participate in this work. And then we're like, mm, yeah, actually just go see the scorecard. <laughs> They've already done it. <laughs> so I'm just trying to yeah. provide some, some yeah. life 
to the text that people provided and the time that people provided. I mean, so so I think I think <laughs> I so the more I think about it, I think maybe my approach might be that so the chaos project is not all about scoring things, right? So that's what OpenSSF is about. So I think that the scorecard could be one metric, and maybe we do need to implement a metric that is around the the score from the scorecard. Yeah. Um, but I think that we could probably create a security metrics model, which has the OpenSSF scorecard, and then some of the other things like the market market bit. Like we as chaos have lots of stuff that's hard to measure in our metrics models. Um, so maybe we create. Um, you know, maybe we strip this down, we dedupe it with, with the OpenSSF one, and then include the OpenSSF scorecard plus maybe a you know a couple of other metrics that are more, more applicable for our audience. Yep, that makes a ton of sense. Sean, I just point out the OpenSSF scorecard is actually only one thing that they do, and they have meetings about a wide range of security related topics, uh, many more meetings a week than we do. So I did, the scorecard is like one of many things. I just wanted to point that out, that it's not the whole of OpenSSF. In fact, it's not, It's there's just a lot more there. So that's, yep. yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, the scorecard is what we all think of when we think of OpenSSF, but they do, they do a lot more. I mean, and the have, best practices badge, the CII badging is a big chunk of it as well. And they have they have a DEI working group now. I mean, so they're they're doing a wide range of things. Mm -hmm. But that badge is included in the scorecard. It's one of the things. Oh, it is. Okay. DEI badge. Yeah. Okay. That hasn't always been the case, but I believe it. Okay. So then. This changes. Okay, I can do this before our next meeting. Your point on where. Oops. Like metrics in the model, we can at least point to these things and then say other things to consider could be wherever the one market. Actually, spell mm -hmm. that out a little bit. Okay. Um, what do you all think about SBOM stuff in this model? I think we need to say something about it. SPDX okay. continues to be the go-to, but okay. I think license, I mean, really the licensing work that we've done relies heavily on an SBOM. Uh, it does. In, in many ways, our work predates the emergence of SBOM as a prominent topic in open source. And we have metrics already defined in that space. And I think we do add value that's not added directly by SPDX. Okay, I, for what it's worth, SPDX has been around longer than us. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, okay. I know. Um, and then there was one called Cyclone DX. Have you heard of that one? It's just a different scanner is my understanding. I think yeah, that's I've heard a, of it, but I don't know anything about it. I think it's another standard. Yeah, so, I think you're right. It's those are the two ways that are accepted for expressing an SBOM. And obviously the LF prefers the SPDX one. <laughs> I'm surprised. Okay. Um, okay. This is really great. We're actually approaching time. This is a good conversation. Um, so it'll only take five more meetings. <laughs> That's 10 weeks to get through the rest of these. Um, slowly but surely folks. <laughs> All right. I think the action item for me is to, to really take a look at that model that we have. Um, so then I can bring that back in two weeks, maybe present it and we can start taking a look at say sustaining contributors or community fatigue if that works for people. I just, I, we have a lot of data in front of us that came from that workshop and we're just gonna have to sort through it 
a little bit. It's just gonna take some time. <laughs> we asked for it, we got it, and now we gotta now we gotta deal with it. Yeah, so. sure. Okay. Well, everybody, I appreciate your time. And yeah, this is thanks, everyone. Back, so thanks a lot. See you, Daniel. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.